When an illegal immigrant who's high on crystal meth decides to cross the border, the wise old Japanese politicians rather than building a wall decide to go old school and build a giant meth gut, whom then wielding a long range weapon or fist instead decided to be a miner. And I love miners. <laughs> In doing so, join me on this journey to the past where we see how old school mechs were actually designed rather than the humanoid feminine design we see today. When looking at what the sculptors brought to the table, just by a mere wink can any individual, minus Gen Alpha, realize that Mogar is old school as the sleek, humanoid, and high-tech Apple-like design that is prevalent in most modern-day mechs are absent, and instead Mogar boasts a simple, robust, and pure utilitarian analog design. Starting off with the head that far from the sleek and horny design found in Gundam Ariel, Mogar retains an 80s Martian-like retro design in which the flat surface area enlarges the head mass, allowing to accommodate various extra parts on top. This is not mentioning the eyes that is filled with the yellow analog lenses alongside retaining a wider mass than those seen on your typical mech, giving off the illusion that Mulgar possesses better view when in reality it's more or less looking with only one eye open when the competitor has a 360 degrees holographic view. So good luck going against the modern day mech, but maybe the biggest factor that helps differentiate Mogar from the rest of the mecha roster is that this fella possesses a literal drill for a mouth, in which the intricate patterns are well depicted, the gunmetal color scheme is well embedded, and the drill can actively move sideways that makes it the perfect tool when drilling targets, both figuratively and literally. Moving down to the neck, good luck trying to break this fella as Mogar, unlike those of a typical Gundam or mobile suit that literally lacks the vertebrae, holds in possession not just in neck, but a gigachat one at that, in which the external titanium armor encases the vital mobile mechanisms at the core, but such gigachat nature isn't helped by those broad and thick shoulders that retain the similar materials on the neck and help it mobilize those arms. And look at the chest. Let's be honest here, I've seen mechanical chests of varying degrees, but out of all of them, Mulgars is the flattest of them all. It is! But moving beyond the torso, the appendages attached to Mogra are more or less simplistic as they get, as the modern incarnation of a humanoid arm with elbows and hands are nowhere to be seen, and in their place is a singular practical arm with its main armament at the end that is more or less reminiscent with the mechs of the time. And talking about main armaments, Mogra is locked and loaded with a pair of heavy duty drills that, if with the right skills, can be an instrument of death to even kaijus in close quarters. Too bad that Mulgar pisses itself when engaged in melee combat. But to compensate for that piss poor performance, the drills can open up to reveal these projectiles which can be fired from a distance and proves its worth when it was able to Walter White a rival dealer when they trespass his turf. But contrary to the arms, the legs are a completely different story as just by the looks, Look at that cake! And as the main mode of mobility, the legs, rather than being covered in titanium casing, are plastered with the blue inner wheels. This is in addition to the enormous skirt that does cover the top portions of the legs, and it's reminiscent of an actual jet rather than what the skirts will ultimately devolve into. This plan really backfired, didn't it? And the feet prioritize functionality over design as there are little stumps that are attached to the ground and just by the tracks at the center that, similar to your modern day tanks, apps to mobilize the mech rather than using them like actual feet as seen through most modern day iterations. But if you look closely by lifting up the feet, there are jet boosters which help to propel Mulgar when the mech is required to engage in flight, and with the aid of the tail booster, makes Mulgar a force to be reckoned with in the air, unless you're either a space traveling kaiju or a Gundam. But there are occasions where doing from the rear is more preferable, in which Mulgar comes prepared as the biggest surprise this mech comes with is is a colossal saw blade situated on the back. And such blades, similar to the giant drills, allows Mogar to resist any threats that like to do it from the rear, or if you're a WWE fan, can conduct the suplex with efficient results. But to test that in front of camera, 
but may be a product of his time, or trying to adhere to Mogura's extraterrestrial kaiju origins, this iteration of Mogura possesses a thick, sturdy, but short mechanical tail that with an additional joint, but nowhere near to those of his kaiju-esque counterparts, allows Mogura to flex his meat over contemporary mobile suits to organic mechs. But this tail isn't here just for the wrist, as by observing the edge of the meat is there an opening that functions to eject the wasted material for a much needed propulsion. And if that sounded weird, what's wrong with you? When looking at the roster that Mogura is accompanied by, Sibarashi. Sibarashi. this is especially true with the latest Monstars roster as, unlike Mogura over here, they are usually accompanied by a single pair of hands or nothing at all. And don't tell me because it's a premium Bandai figure, as Monster X, also a premium Bandai figure, came with just hands. HANDS! Firstly, there is this hanger that well sculpted with the various patterns and carvings well embedded, the paint job is singular, with the olive green drab being lazily applied, and if it's a model kit in which, with a reasonable price, and the role of the bar to both assemble and paint the kit, but this is a premium figure in which I had to cough up an absurd amount of money, so I expected Bandai to actually serve me a premium accessory where everything was painted neatly. Then again, what did I really expect from a premium Bandai figure? But a neat gimmick regarding this accessory is that the hanger can move at several points in which by pulling the center, spreading the sides, and placing the figure in the middle, you can recreate when Mogura is undergoing preparations. But just in case... Scratch that, this is a great accessory. But if you want Mogur to feel like it's really in action, take out the projectile, then detach the warhead, attach it to either the steam effect or the fired steam effect, assemble the axe stand, place the peg in the hole at the bottom, attach it on the open drill, remove the bat, press the centerpiece, remove the center ball, and add the alternative piece, in which you have Mogur when he's engaging targets at long range or when blowing up one of Space Godzilla's crystal meth. But do you remember Mogur being able to fly? Because Bandai did, as this titular mech is accompanied by these alternative parts. So it has been a while. Your transformation sequence, let's go! And here you have Mogur when it's in flight in which it is beautifully recreated with the terrestrial components being replaced or reshaped to reduce air drag for a more aerodynamic form that enables the titular mech to engage in either aerial dogfights with similar kaijus or to perform a literal kamikaze run on terrestrial targets. But the figure is heavy, so placing it on a stand might be difficult down the line. As a kaiju-sized mech, it may be deceiving to the eyes that Mogura here is massive as kaijus come, but that is where your eyes deceive you. As this is an SH Monstars and not your higher toys in which scaling has not been this line's strong suit. But that's so, Mogur here is still a mech and not your Gundam mech in which it still stands pretty tall with a whopping 16.5 centimeters or 6.49 inches tall. Here's Mogur next to Gumpla, Demons Among Us, Underage Miners, and Gojira, Godzilla, 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 and Godzilla. Now, if you're familiar with the SH Monstars line, they're more or less stiff compared to your typical Japanese counterparts, where any size of joint flexibility prowess is your fucking disappointment. With only a few exceptions. And look at the brick house that is Mogur here. Just guess. Just guess how it's gonna turn out. The head. <sighs> Neck movement? What neck movement? Shoulders can lift pretty well for a mech, made during the 70s. Partly any elbow movement. Hands? What hands? Torso? God f But side to side movement is decent. Leg split? My disappointment is immeasurable. Where's the knee movement? 
Where's the knee movement? Bare bones feet and a decent tail is what I would say if Mechagodzilla didn't come out before. So, regarding movement, I don't want peace. I want problems, always. So, regarding my final thoughts, the SH Monsters iteration of Mogura, G4 Storage Doc Sally version, was a surprise and a welcome one at that. As recent SH Monsters releases have been a disappointment after disappointment, especially with their competitors further encroaching with future releases. But that is not the case with Mogura here, as not only did Bandai put in their A game where the sculpting paint job is beautifully applied with no hiccups, unlike their previous releases. Alongside the abundance of accessories that add to the play factor of the particular mech, with the hangar bay being able to accommodate other Bandai produced mechs. The only gripe I have is the limited range of articulation that makes even the high toys Godzilla cry. But then again, Mogar was more or less stiff in his on screen appearance, so I can't really fault Bandai for their choice. With that out of the way, if you're a fan of Mogar here, I would definitely recommend this figure and give it a ranking of an A-.